Hi, how's it going? I'm Malachi Grubb, CEO and engineer of Elite Automation. My name is Landon Houghton, and I am an assistant for Elite Automation. So today, we're going to be answering a young cat's questions on careers. Uh, Landon, how old are you right now? I'm 16 years old. 16 years old. So uh, a couple more years, he's going to be looking at the, the college field, what direction he's going to kind of go in life. And uh, we're basically going to let him sit here and ask a few questions and and uh, hopefully those questions that he asks will add value and maybe some direction into your, your career path. Alright, so the first question I want to ask is like what is a norm what, what what does a normal day look like a normal day in automation so definitely your days will be different depending on the type of employer you go for so if you go with a manufacturing employer versus like a systems integrator uh things will be quite a bit different uh they're they're very t they're, they're they're a totally different uh work environment so if you're working for a manufacturer which that's what majority of people will be doing is they'll be working for a manufacturer you know that industrial automation life will generally be more of the maintenance side of things maybe optimization uh and it also depends too are you going into programming are you going to mechanical engineering uh, but a lot of times it, it will be more on the maintenance side of things like if it's mechanical engineering You'll be designing and fabricating maybe broken pieces or maybe fixturing that isn't quite designed right originally So they're doing some improvements on the designs and then if you're doing like programming It's kind of kind of gonna be the same type of concept. You're gonna be you know, maybe trying to optimize line speeds maybe the code acts kind of buggy and does weird things and calls causes downtime uh, maybe you'll be, you know, tasked to uh, make it so that that line has less downtime. But then uh, also you may work for a manufacturer that ha has their own uh, system integration division, which that's actually one of the most optimal places to work, in my opinion. Uh, I really think that anybody that's going to get in the automation space, they should either work directly for a systems integrator or they should work on a systems integration team for a manufacturer. Uh, and the reason why is because you gain the most experience of the most engineering skill sets and technologies. Uh, so you'll be working directly a lot of times with you know mechanical engineers, software engineers, uh, electrical engineers, the, the builders of the machines, and you're also going to be able to see the new technologies that are on the market. You're gonna be able to see different brands. Now, if you work for a manufacturer, you're not gonna see a ton of different brands because uh, they're most likely going to be using whatever their company standard is. Whereas, like a systems integrator, we are doing work for those companies. So, you know, maybe this customer for us wants a uh, Allen Bradley PLC, but this customer wants a Siemens PLC, and so we will get that that exposure to different technologies where you won't really necessarily have that in the manufacturing space. But still, regardless, that'll be your your best approach for gaining that experience. So. You know, the, the normal day of those individuals, to go back to Lannan's question, would be really being involved in, in, in communicating with a lot of different engineers on, on how to develop a system, you know, what needs to change, what's the best way to go about it, and then, you know, the, the manufacturing field, like I said, it's going to be a lot more of that uh, just improvement of things and uh, an optimization of the equipment. All right. Um, I was also wondering if, say for instance, you go in for mechanical engineering, but then you also have a degree or just like a hobby of like maybe welding or say for instance, like maybe PLC programming and stuff like that. Could you do all three of those things kind of at once and like that sort of thing? I would definitely say yes. Uh, you can try to do multiple things at once. You definitely can't do all of them at once. And it also make it a lot easier if you're doing mechanical engineering and then like welding slash fabrication because those kind of go hand in hand a little bit together. Generally, you're generally when you're engineering something, after that engineered product is going to either go through machining and then fabrication, which will be your welding. So 
they're all in the same family together. It may be very, very difficult to go from mechanical engineering to PLC programming. That really wouldn't make a ton of sense. Uh, both for a career standpoint and an education standpoint because a lot of the skills won't apply for a lot of jobs. If you work for a systems integrator, maybe having like two weird skill sets of like a mechanical engineer and a PLC programmer could be very beneficial because if you're programming the line or, or if you have some understanding of programming, it may actually have some effect on, on how you mechanically engineer things. Uh, but that'll be if you're really designing for automated systems. Like if you're just de designing like bracketry or you know, maybe you're not even designing for the manufacturing floor. You might even be doing more of a product design, which could be could be completely different, and it won't have a lot of uh, machining and, and fabrication as well. But it does make 100% sense to to have experience in both of those because I'll tell you that like a lot of people, they come out of college and they're a mechanical engineer, but they've never turned a wrench. And that's extremely terrible, both for the employee and the employer because now the employees can be hard for them to get a job. It's gonna be hard for the employer to want to employ them because uh, they say, okay, we're gonna hire you for a mechanical engineer. And they say, well, what kind of like mechanics have you ever worked on? And when you tell them nothing, it's kind of gonna be a red flag. Like how are you supposed to mechanically design things if you've never done anything mechanical in your life? Thank you. And another question I was wondering is, what should we be going to school for? Say for instance, we want to do like industrial automation, like what Elite Automation does, but what do you think would make like the most money but then again like say for instance when you go work for someone what are they going to be looking for what type of degrees okay so a big thing to think about is if you want to talk about money uh that's definitely gonna be one direction that's what's gonna one thing that's gonna really guide you uh but then also too like what do you feel like you want to do like if I tell you like programming is gonna pay you more than mechanical engineering, you may not, you still may not just want to automatically go to programming just because it pays more. Because maybe you hate it, maybe you don't really understand logical thinking very much, or, or just like something about programming, like you just can't grasp it, can't get a hold of it, and maybe you have a better a better mind around things that you can visually see. So that will definitely be an impact on what direction you should go. Um, on a financial standpoint, generally your programmers get paid the most, uh, and then it's kind of followed by electrical and mechanical engineers, uh, and they're not like, they're, they're, there's a pretty big gap but when it comes to like programmers and uh, mechanical and electrical engineers, and the main reason why is because demand. Uh, there's not enough programmers out there, and especially programmers for like industrial automation like you may have software engineers who are programming computer software but there's not a lot of people going into the space and it's also partially because there's not a lot of colleges uh really putting out uh students that are that are directed towards this space so then to answer land's question uh what are employers going to be looking for for us, the number one thing that we really care about is what is your applicable skill set? What can I put you to today that I can utilize you in, right? And and this is another huge disconnect within colleges is that they're not spitting out uh, engineers who are capable of working today. And with the way our culture is, like that it's just almost not even acceptable at this point. We, we need people who are ready to go into the job field, uh, and, if, and if they're not gonna be ready to go into the job field, then really what's the point of spending that two years of uh, education? You may as well spend two years of on-the-job training and just get paid like crap and, and, and make, make some money while you're learning a particular skill set. Now given uh, there's still in our culture a gap where it, you, it's gonna be really hard for you to get a job now I will say that I've learned a ton that there's opportunity everywhere. All you got to literally do is call people, email people, message them on LinkedIn, send them Facebook uh, messages, things like that, and you'll eventually talk to the right person that says, yeah, we'll give you a job. I don't care if you have any experience. Uh, you want to learn and you know potentially stick with us as a company, maybe long term. Uh, yeah, sure, we'll, we'll teach you up. We'll uh, show you some things. And so, so some practical, like, some practical things that you can do that'll really prepare you to be ready for that employer is 
educate yourself on the software, right? So don't just understand like how programming works. Use Studio 5000 for Allen Bradley PLC. Use Inventor or SolidWorks for mechanical engineering and, and actually utilize that, that software to, to design things. Uh, I don't care if, you're, if your college isn't telling you to you know use SolidWorks or Inventor and they say, oh, well, I don't know, we don't know what em your employer is going to have, so it doesn't make sense to teach you. I can 110% uh, tell you that you're better off learning SolidWorks and, and working on nothing but SolidWorks. Uh, coming to the job field and saying, hey, uh, you know, I've messed around with SolidWorks. I probably have like 500 hours of SolidWorks time under my belt, uh, and I have my mechanical engineering degree. Now, what's going to happen is, sure, there may be companies that say, oh, we're inventor, like, uh, you know, we don't use SolidWorks, so that's not super applicable to us. But here's the thing that they're going to say, oh, you understand 3D modeling software. Oh, you've been doing 3D modeling. Uh, as a practice for a period of time which like i said these colleges are spitting out people who haven't have almost zero actual software knowledge so if you just have one software knowledge even if it's not in the software they use uh they're gonna be more apt to hire you because the next person probably didn't even have any uh software knowledge at all uh, and then also the other 50 percent of people that are using solidworks are gonna say yeah we use solidworks you're gonna be ready to jump right into the job task uh, and you might even be able to get raises very immediately like if they if they are a type of company and they start out at like you know 25 28 dollars an hour or 30 dollars an hour whatever it may be for a mechanical engineer literally within months if you negotiate properly you might be able to to get a dollar two three dollar an hour raise whatever their next like tier and maybe even your two or three tiers uh, into like their mechanical engineering uh, hierarchy of, of pay scale. So definitely, just, so definitely spend a lot of times on the particular softwares, even if you can't get your hands on like uh, Studio 5000 or some of these other softwares because they're very expensive. Uh, you can do cheaper softwares like uh, Fusion 360, I think they have a free uh, student version. So utilize uh, the different software options that are out there that you can afford. So my last question to you is that do you think going to like a trade school in high school, such as um, like Sick Tech or whatever in our city, um, do you think that's like beneficial to um, like after high school? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, especially if you plan on doing any type of continual education after that, you're gonna be hundred percent more prepared, and your actual skill set and knowledge are gonna be so much higher on a resume. I'm not sure how much it will help. Uh, I think it will 100% have an impact for sure, but I do think the biggest advantage of going to a school like that is going to be the skill sets you learn. It's going to be the knowledge that you learn. I'll just go ahead and give you a, a perfect example is whenever I started going to college, within like my first semester of being in college, I landed a job with a systems integrator. That exposure of working for a systems integrator while I was going to college, just that alone uh, has such a great impact, like a multiplier effect, because I'd be at work working on things, and then I'd go and ask my professors. Then I, yeah, then I'd go back to work, and maybe I'd done something in school uh, earlier that day, or the week before, or last semester, or whatever it may be, that I'd already actually had a little bit of exposure to. So then maybe my learning curve was a little bit faster at work, and so those two things were working hand in hand with one another to like raise up my skills, and and what I truly believe gave gave me a lot more knowledge in a much shorter period of time and so that same type of concept will happen with whenever you're starting uh, to go to like a, a Sigma class and then this goes this is like a perfect example too if you do a Sigma class and then you can find a company like ours that would be willing to accept you into our, our facility uh, to work with us hands down you can't get any better than that because I can promise you if you work for a systems integrator like us you was at a SIG class like that I can almost guarantee that you could find a job where you would make like $25 an hour starting off out of high school. Not No college degree at all. Uh, just overall having that, you know, two, three years of experience uh, in the actual industry and also going to a SIG Tech school, which also teaches the, the classes there. And then you go, and then if you go ahead and go for like a, a two year degree at a, at a, at like a community college, then by the time you've gotten out of that, you basically have four years of, of knowledge under your belt 
and if you still coupled that with working for like a systems integrator during that period of time, you're gonna be basically at the same skill set as somebody that's 26 years old whenever you're like 20 years old. Uh, now that's that's massive. Once you get older, you're really, really experienced those type of things. You'd be like, wow, like, man, I could have been X further down the road if I'd have known about this. Like, just for like myself and how hard I work, like, I could have my same skill set and knowledge where I'm at now at like the age of 25. If I would have just learned sooner, if I would have just, if I would have just went to the SIG classes and, and uh, which are basically like a technical school, school for high schoolers. If I had took, took those like automation robotics uh, courses, like when I was in high school, then I would have been propelled that much further that it would have probably shaved like a good four extra years of knowledge into my brain <laughs> yeah guys so if you found this video useful make sure you hit that subscribe button because we have a ton of other content uh, not only about college and like career path stuff but we also have technical content for like robot programming PLC programming uh, things along those lines also if you drop down in the comments below any particular questions you may have we'll do our best to get to those questions and maybe make another YouTube video on that topic so that way uh, we can help even more people in the industry all right guys catch y'all right. in the next one peace